Hey everybody! So recently, RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 2 winner Alaska released a video for her song Come to Brazil, which is an obvious ode to the hordes of Brazilian fans of things on the internet who often like to comment Come to Brazil on everything. Which is great, but it also got me thinking about why English speakers, especially Americans, sound just a little bit off when they're speaking in foreign languages. So today we're going to be looking at that music video and some things you can look for when trying to understand why English speakers' accents are the way they are. Now, there are a few main different things that influence the way that English speakers speak other languages, and that is very much still the case when it comes to Portuguese. The three things that we're going to be looking at are the difference in vowels, the letter R, and the letter L. Those three things make all of the difference when it comes to having a more natural pronunciation in one or the other language. And that can even be true when it comes to Brazil versus Portugal. We can start with one thing that I noticed, however, which is a very English-speaking way of saying a Portuguese word, which is how Alaska says the word Português. She says Português, which is an awkward way of saying that word, because in English we say Portuguese with a ch sound, but in Portuguese itself that sound doesn't exist in that word. But let's take a look at those vowels. Portuguese, like most Romance languages, except for French, has a pretty simplified fixed set of vowels that don't vary very much from how they're written. When when you're reading Portuguese, by and large, what you see is what you get when it comes to the pronunciation. You just have to know a few basic rules about the way that it reduces its vowels on unstressed syllables. But that is not the case with English. English has a ton of different vowel sounds. English is a Germanic language, and that is a very common feature of Germanic languages. The abundance of vowels also makes English harder to pronounce for non-native speakers, because when you get sounds that are not very very common in a lot of other languages like eh and ah, it can be hard to even hear the difference. Not hearing the difference is a common problem for English speakers when they're trying to pronounce nasal vowels in Portuguese like um, which can have a different level of nasality depending on the accent of Portuguese. But aside from that, English speakers also often have a tendency of pronouncing words in other languages the way that you might read it if you were reading it in English. And that can include things like diphthongs. English loves to use diphthongs instead of fixed vowels. Whereas Portuguese has e and o, like in você and avô, which is not to be confused with avó, English takes that openness and often turns it into a diphthong, which is to say that an English speaker might say vô say or avô, based on the way that English treats its vowels. So when you're looking at an English speaking accent, one of the things that you want to look for are the vowels. But another big thing that affects pronunciation is a little problem letter known as the letter R. R is a complicated letter in a lot of languages because the way that people pronounce it changes dramatically and often. It is a letter that evolves quite a lot. Whereas English has complicated vowels, Portuguese has complicated Rs. In English, it's fairly simple. You either pronounce er or you drop it. And that can be a distinctive feature of accents in English, which leads us to pronunciations like car in American English, or ca in an East Coast accent, or even maybe ca in a received pronunciation British accent. The R's are one of the most emblematic features of any accent in English, and yet the way we pronounce R is only er. In Portuguese, there are a bunch of different ways that we can go about saying R, and it depends on where it comes in a word. In Europe, at the beginning of a word, the most common sound that you'll hear is r, such as in words like ratu or real. That's also the case when it's a double R or if the R comes right after a voiced consonant. In some places in Portugal, and especially among older people in Portugal, you might even hear a rolled R, a R sound, like ratu or real. But that pronunciation is less standard and it is disappearing over time. There's always a tapped R when you have an R on its own, not at the beginning of a word. So para or cara, you hear the R sound. That is also true in Brazilian Portuguese. But the way the Brazilian handles R's that come at the beginning or end of a word or double R's is very different from European Portuguese. The most common pronunciation
pronunciation of those R's in Brazilian Portuguese is similar to the way that in English we might say the letter H. So you might hear something like hatu or real. At the end of words, Brazilians often will omit the R or the H sound will get even lighter. So where you might have something like passar with the tap at the end in Portugal, in Brazil it would be something like passar. But that's not the only way that R can be pronounced in Brazil. For some cariocas, you might hear a light H sound. For other people from the interior of Brazil, especially rural areas, you might even hear an er sound before other consonants or at the end of words. So you might even have something like bar or barco. That er sound is a little bit harder than the English er because the tongue is raised just a little bit further when you're saying it. So with all of this confusion about the many different ways and rules about how to say the letter R in Portuguese, English speakers will often just default to an er sound, especially because a lot of English speakers have a hard time tapping or rolling their R's. And so if you pair that with the vowels, you might end up with something like rato. That obviously sounds bizarre to Portuguese speaking ears, but at least now we know why that is. But we have one more distinctive letter that clues us in on the differences between pronunciation between English and Portuguese. And that letter is the letter L. Portugal has a very heavy, very strong, velarized L sound. In Europe, they say Brazil, Brasileiro, with an L sound. That sound is achieved by raising the back of the tongue further to the front of the mouth while making an L sound. On the other hand, in Brazil, L is often reduced to a W sound, like English W. Most often, they say Brasil. But when Brazilians say an L sound, it is a much lighter sound that's made by using the broader tip of the tongue against the palate. So they say Brasileiro as opposed to the European Brasileiro. English speaking L's are sort of an intermediary point between those two L's. However, English speakers often have Spanish as a language of reference. When you hear English speakers trying to say foreign words, they'll often put it through the ringer of a Spanish approximation of pronunciation. And that is very much the case with the L sound, which in Spanish is made by using just the tip of the tongue either along the teeth or the palate, so they have a light L sound. And you can hear that in the way that Alaska is pronouncing Brazil. You can hear all of these things together at many points when Alaska is saying them in the song. So the next time you go listen to it, or the next time you hear a native English speaker trying to say something in Portuguese, have those things in mind when you're trying to help them with their pronunciation. That's all I got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you learned something or otherwise found it interesting, give me a thumbs up down below. You might think about subscribing to my channel if you're not already. I make videos about food, culture, and the Portuguese language, which you can find in playlists in the eye above, and I will see you next time.